Alrighty, welcome to a three on three draft. We've opened a Black Lotus. You'll love to see that. It is myself, Folero, and Quiniac battling against Updraft Elemental, my boy Mac, and Juju Bean. So, got a tough draft on our hands. I am passing to Updraft, who's going to take Ragavan. Quiniac, probably, or some combination of Thoughtseize and Ragavan are the first two picks. Academy probably goes after that. But that's fine. We get a Lotus. No concerns here. What is going to be gone here? So, Raghavan, Thoughtseize, Academy. Oh, I might get Doomsday back. Doomsday Lotus is sick. And maybe Shinobi, maybe Fairy Mastermind, maybe Imperial Seal. I'm not sure. But I'm going to start with Lotus. And second pick, I'll probably still take Birds. I know the Doomsday might come back or has a very good chance of it. But there's no great Doomsday card here. There is, I guess, Toxic Deluge. Hmm, interesting. Doomsday in a three-on-three three is a little bit dicey, but let's talk through this. So I think the best card in the pack as the cur cube currently stands right now is Birds of Paradise. I just think Birds is really good. It's what all the green decks want to start with, and any color is huge. Also, Lotus is good in green decks because green has a lot of like good four-mana plays to Lotus out. Cards like Minsk and Boo, Asika's Chariot, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think I still will just take the birds here. I just don't really want to take Toxic Deluge. Passing, Deluge, Tracker, Scrubland, who knows what else. Oh, now there's Hole Breacher here. And Chaos Defiler, Caracas, Fiery Confluence. This is a very strong pack. Grief, too. Wow, all right. Folera opened a pretty strong one. I guess I'll take Hole Breacher here. It doesn't work the best with birds, but I do like a Hole Breacher. B knows that he's passed a whole breacher here. The other option I could take like Fiery Confluence or Grief, but, or Chaos Defiler, no, those don't seem as good as just taking whole breacher here. And, you know, birds pick a side, I could certainly end up in Doomsday or Doomsday adjacent still, like keep that option open. I just didn't really think it made sense to take Toxic Deluge or any other card out of that pack when there was a Birds of Paradise there. <laughs> All right, if you're going to pass me Hole Breacher into Echo, I guess I'll just take it. There's also a Jar here, too, but I think Echo's a stronger card. A lot easier to, like, put this in your graveyard, cast it for only three mana, sick with Lion's Eye. Passing Jar, of course, but there's also Baleful Strix, a Triland, Endurance, Dark Slick Shores, Shielders Edict. Yeah, there's a chance this Jar comes back. And there's a the LED. All right, and... and I don't care about this birds anymore. I'm almost assuredly not playing it because LED plus L Lotus is just like now Yogwell's busted. Breach was already going to be good. And if this doomsday comes back, we're really cooking. Passing a Sylvan Caritid from the Catacombs under City Sewers. Well, I mean, Plateau and Oliphant are probably going to go. So is Thraben. I might get this blue black land back. That would be pretty sick. Here, I'm just going to take Lotus Petal. Now that I have all three of these zeros, any Yogwell is just going to be so disgusting. And... It's good with storm cards too. Pass, passing a chromatic star that I would like, an unmarked grave which might come back. Ooh, well this this is this is what we call a start. I mean this deck can go turn one lotus hole breacher led echo. I can turn one hole breacher them, and th there there's some bustedness going on here. All right, so doomsday did come back. Sort of fallen shinobi fairy mastermind imperial seal. Can I double float doomsday? I don't think I should. I think I should just take Doomsday here. I don't love it because I feel like no one else could possibly want it, but I don't know. Maybe I should take Imperial Seal. Let's see. One, two, three. I honestly think Doomsday will come back. Imperial Seal is also really good in this deck. Let's just take the Imperial Seal. And then now I'll probably take Drown in the Lock over Scrubland. I think I'm a little more likely to want Drown than I will to want Scrubland. That one's close, though. Grief came back? Sure, at this point I'll take it. Also a Chaos Defiler, wow. Well, Grief is pretty sick if I'm playing a combo deck. I can protect myself or protect my combos here while I fire off a, you know, Grief into Hole Breacher sort of combo, that sort of thing. Yeah, this looks great. I, I think Doomsday is going to come back, even if it doesn't, no big deal. Um, This is tricky. Do I want Dark Slick Shores or Baleful Strix? They both seem pretty enticing here. Um, I guess Baleful Strix to pitch to Grief is kind of nice. And Cantrips are good with Doomsday. Oh, Oliphant and Thraben are still here. I did not, I did not foresee that. What do I want to hate from Updraft here? Probably the Oliphant. 
And this pack, there's gemstone mine versus nurturing peatland. I think I actually want the nurturing peatland because if I do end up in doomsday, which did in fact come back, then having a cantrip is really important. Okay. So what are we trying to do here? Fine. Thassa's Oracle uh, is like a very high priority because I'm at a point where if I doomsday and then have a cantrip like a peatland or, or a baleful strix i can maybe just go from there like i can combo from there obviously any draw sevens are really good i mean this this is such a disgusting start for a six player draft uh i'll take maelstrom pulse here i think that's a little bit better and then balaged recovery probably not playing either all right pack two fast bond huh fast bond is not ideal I might just take Deep Cavern Bat. I don't think I need Fast Bond in this deck. This this deck is, uh, it's got Lotus, Lion's Eye. Oh, two Lotuses. <laughs> Lotus and Lion's Eye. Um, keeps resetting me, I'm not sure why. So I feel like I have a lot of mana. I think I just want to take the Deep Cavern Bat or the Grim Monolith or the Lorien Reveal. I don't think I want to take Fast Bond. I don't want to play another color. I don't need the mana. I've got all those mana accelerants. Maybe, yeah, I think Deep Cavern is going to be my pick here. And then follow up. Oh, Dark Ritual, Minsk and Boo, and Mox Diamond. <sighs> wow, that's tough. I think Dark Ritual is the card I need the most here. And then I can pass JJ a uh, Minsk and a Mox Diamond, and JJ is either going to have to hate or splash Minsk and Boo. That seems fine to me. All right. I think Dark Ritual is going to be quite a bit better than Mox Diamond here, and I don't think I'll wheel Dark Ritual. That that seems a little bit ambitious. All right, I think we finally got our cards sorted the way we want. All right, so now, oh, there's a Tendrils and a Collective Brutality and a Brazen Bar. Tendrils will come back. I'm not too worried about that, and I don't even know if I can set up a Doomsday Tendrils kill. I really just need a Thassa's Oracle more than basically anything, but I think Collective Brutality is going to be what I want here. I think I like that more than a blue-black surveil land or a brazen borrower. Collective Brutality seems like it can set things up pretty nicely. Clear the path for a Doomsday or Hole Breacher plan here. And it's a discard outlet for Echo Vions, which is pretty nice. Turn two, Brutality. I don't know, you play against like an aggro deck, you're like, turn two, Brutality, kill your thing, duress you, even though that doesn't necessarily do that much. And then you can Echo Hole Breacher on three. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is pick four. There's still a Gristlebrand, a Jace, a Volk, a Fetchland, a Snapcaster, a Thief, and a Voidwalker. I don't think I want Gristlebrand here. I might just want Jace. That's a sick card to Lotus out. And I will probably get some of these options back. Urborg would be really nice if I were to find one, but I think this looks like a Jace pick to me. I think that Tendrils is going to come back too. So basically my kill condition, if I can find a Yawgmoth's Will, I can probably string together a Tendrils kill. If I can find a Thassa's Oracle, that will uh, go a long way. Now I just get to slam Polluted Delta. Passing a Late Fury, which I guess makes it less likely Updraft took Ragavan and more likely they took Thoughtseize. But if they took Thoughtseize, I'm, I'm pretty happy cutting them off of black. Either way, I'll take Polluted Delta. Days would also be good here, but Polluted Delta is just perfect. I, I really can't turn that down. Now there's Exhum. Hmm, this is this pack's a miss for me. I guess I could take Exhum because there's a chance I end up in Reanimator. Maybe that Gristlebrand wheels if nobody wanted it. And I don't really want to splash any of these cards. So, sure, I'll, I'll take an Exhum that I'm not super likely to want to play. <laughs> Fast Bond came back. Nobody wanted Fast Bond. I could take Grave Titan. I have Dark Ritual, Lotus. I could just Lotus and Exhum. I could just put out a quick Grave Titan. I could take Fast Bond. I have a Nurturing Peatland. And any other draw sevens would be really good. Hmm. I think I'll just take the Fast Bond. I don't I don't think animating I, I have bigger hopes than animating Grave Titan here. I think I think Fast Bond could be it. Alright, and then here I think I'll just take Fatal Push as an interaction card. Raucous Theater gives me red off Polluted Delta and a Scry or Surveil, but I think that Fatal Push is good. And now I got to take Tendrils. Tendrils is going to be too potentially important. Even though Underground Mortuary would be really nice in this deck, I think I think Tendrils is good. Though, now that all those black Scry lands are gone, or Surveil lands, I kind of... Well, I guess it's kind of hard to Imperial Seal. You can't 
fetch for them and then Imperial Seal. What you could do is if you had one in hand, you could play it, then Imperial Seal. Now, look, now I take Gristlebrand, which did wheel, and I have Exhum, so now I've got another potential combo. Here, I'll just... Do I want to hate the Teferi or just put Show and Tell in my deck? This easily could be a Show and Tell deck. And here, I'll take Botanical Sanctum for my Fast Bond. Grave Titan came back around anyway. All right, perfect. And I think we got a monster going into pack three. Cards I would like to see. Uh, Thassa's Oracle, Yawgmoth's Will, Time Twister. Well, obviously Time Walk would be nice. Uh, there's there's some good ones here. I guess I'll pass a Restless Prairie and then a Kosali Pride Mage, sure. Okay, going into pack three. We've opened some some good ones so far. Let's see if we can uh, we can spike another one here. And what do we got? Uh, oh, Archon of Cruelty. Okay, and then there's a decent chance we wheel Shallow Grave, I feel like. But Archon is pretty sick. I don't know how how the Doomsday fits in yet, but we'll figure it out. And uh, I'm just going to slam Archon here over Spellseeker, Bitter Triumph, Shallow Grave, Time Warp, Dark Confidant. I mean, there's a lot of cards I want here, especially given that someone's going to take Ballista. Someone's probably going to take Pyromancer. Sail into the West is another card that if I'm playing Fast Bond, I might want to play. So... All right, we got some good outs, and some of the cards we want are cards that most other people wouldn't even consider, like Thassa's Oracle. So I think uh, I feel pretty good about, about that. Oh, Demonic Tutor. Yes, that was an awesome pickup. Demonic Tutor is so good in this deck. Passing a Broadside Bombardiers, but Updraft passed me the late uh, Fury, so maybe that's not so bad. And we did pass Bean and Minsk and Boo, so I'm curious where that went. But easy Demonic Tutor here, and... Oh, we've got a monster brewing. All right. Here, wow, there's Corpse Dance and Mind Twist, but also Luris and Itali, and, and Lelia for that matter. I'm kind of interested in Luris. I've got Baleful Strix, Deep Cavern Bed, and then all the Lotuses to play. I, I'm not going to companion it because I want to reanimate these big things, but just putting Luris in my deck seems pretty good, and I feel like I'll get Corpse Dance back. I could also take it tally, but I, I feel like I'm getting to too many targets and not enough reanimates at that point. Though I guess show and tell a tally is kind of interesting. Oh, I'm going to play show and tell in this deck for sure. Show and tell with Archon is, is awesome. I kind of feel like Luris and then wheel whichever Corpse Dance or a tally. I could also just take the Corpse Dance. But Luris is such a strong card. All right, and here, yeah, I'll take the Luris. That, that's a tough one, but... I think Luris is what I want. Oh, and now I could take Persist, because Persist gets back Archon. So I have two combos for Archon. And I think... I think... Oh, there's the Thassa's Oracle! That was the one card I was missing. Okay. Slamming Thassa's Oracle. Pick five. Pick 35. Oh, I'm not even gonna... I'm not gonna risk it, am I? This is tough. I've got Currency Converter, Necron Deathmark, Adeline... Because Currency Converter would also just be really good in this deck, is the thing. I feel like I can wield the Oracle. One, two, three, four, five. There's enough good cards in this pack. All right. And then now I can... <laughs> there's Thopter Foundry and Sword. That's fine. I'll take Gorio's Vengeance to go with my Gristlebrand and maybe Atali if I wheel it. And then here, Shallow Grave came back. Okay, now I kind of wish I took Atali, but... That's fine, and we'll take Knight's Whisper. And then Corpse Dance came back. There's also Torsten, but I don't think Torsten's even good to reanimate, so I'll just take the Corpse Dance and be sad that I didn't take a Tali here. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with deck building in a second here. And then here, Malcolm's actually a card that I will definitely be interested in playing. I don't think I'm playing this Fast Bond. The, the Sail into the West didn't come back, which is funny. Thassa's Oracle did come back. Okay, I'm not crazy. I mean, maybe that was risky, but I feel like it wasn't crazy. And then I guess, am I not going to play Blooming Marsh? I don't think Updraft is playing Thopter Sword. We know we're not getting the other one back, but I'll take the Blooming Marsh. That's fine. Oh, Sail Until West did come back. Never mind. I was I was too, too focused on the uh, Shallow Grave. And then I guess I'll hate a Sunfall over a Grim. All right, well, we got quite a deck to build here. I really love how everything turned out. I guess I now wish I took a Tali over Luris there, but uh, we'll, we'll see in deck building. 
All right, this is a bit tough build because I've already put in some lands and we're at five cards over and that's without tendrils too because I, I don't think I actually need tendrils here. It is tempting with Gristlebrand, but this is tough. I actually don't even have that many blue cards. I'm wondering if maybe I just cut the fast bond stuff. I do have some lands. I have three green lands plus Balaged Recovery is not a terrible card just to have access to. This deck's going to go through its whole deck pretty easily. Yeah, I wish I took Itali over Lurus because I ended up getting uh, Gorio's Vengeance and Wheeling Shallow Grave and getting Corpse Dance. But Archon and Gristlebrand are still excellent with that, so that that's not too bad. Discard Outlets, I've got Collector Brutality. I have Show and Tell, which I think is going to be good here, and I have Currency Converter. Mm, maybe I cut the Fatal Push. What if I cut the green entirely? And then... I would have to add more lands. I'd keep the nurturing peat land, but I would cut the other lands. And actually, I would use different lands, I think. But um, let's see. 10 swamps, 10, 11, 12. I mean, I could probably even go one less swamp. And then uh, one, two, three, three islands, something like that. Four. So I have four blue sources plus. Lotus LED is up to six, or Lotus Lotus Petals up to six blue sources. I mean, I don't need that many sources. I could probably, and this is 14 lands plus Lotus, Lotus Petal, Dark Ritual. Part of the advantage of cutting the green is I think I can just play fewer lands. This deck is just not, does not need a lot of lands in play. Um, let's see. I think I should actually go one more island, one less swamp, and... 14 lands. Yeah, that actually doesn't seem unreasonable. Feels like I've got a lot of cheap cards, a lot of pitch cards. Let's do it. All right, time for round one. I'm playing against Juju Bean here, and this deck's going to mulligan aggressively, I can tell you that. And that hand is no good. Uh, what about this? Yeah, I mean, this is a turn two Echo of Eons. So I think that's a reasonable hand. All right, here I'm going to keep this. I'll put, I guess I'll put a Delta on the bottom. And Juju Beans also mulliganing. Well, we're both getting a reset here because I am going to go turn on Imperial Seal for uh, Echo of Eons. One thing that's kind of unfortunate is if this was Shallow Grave, I'd actually have the opportunity to do a really cool play, which is turn one at Imperial Seal for Gristlebrand. Turn two, I'd cast Shallow Grave and in response crack LED. And because Shallow Grave doesn't target, I would end up with a uh, Gristlebrand Shallow Graved into play, which is pretty sweet. All right, well, JJ Mold to five, but I don't think that changes too much. I could also get DT. I could go, hold on. I could go turn two DT crack LED Doomsday. Oh, what would I Doomsday into? And then... I could Doomsday into, let's see, what's my, I don't have a way to mill. I could Doomsday into Knight's Whisper, Knight's Whisper. So I draw down to four cards, Knight's Whisper, and then Thassa's Oracle, turn two, and yeah, all right. So I'm going to Imperial Seal for Demonic Tutor, play my LED and pass. And I think, I think this actually could work out. All right, so draw, play an island, hold down control, cast DT, crack for black, and then cast Doomsday. And let's see how this works. All right, so I wanna get Thassa's Oracle, Black Lotus. Picking up that Knight's Whisper was quietly extremely good knight's whisper and then so i'm gonna go next turn draw knight's whisper into lotus oracle and then play oracle with two cards left and then my top card will be exhum and shallow grave so i can keep getting back the oracle if that doesn't work all right i'll do that and we'll put Shallow Grave, and then Exhum. Boom. 
All right, pass the turn here. Kraken Arid Mesa. Getting a Zeator's Proven Ground. All right, well, that's not the highest on the list of things that can stop a, a Doomsday kill. So Juju might have a way to kill the Thassa's Oracle, but it's even looking less likely now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Night's Whisper. Lotus, Thassa's Oracle, and that's a turn three. So, uh, yeah, mold to six and, and a turn three kill. Lion's Eye Diamond is a hell of a card, I'll tell you that much. And Thassa's Oracle resolves, and ba boom, there we go. All right, sideboarding against green. Do I want like a fatal push? Yeah, I think. We'll play it as it lies for now, and we'll see if we need to change things. All right, time for game two. Uh, this looks like a mulligan to me. Hand doesn't actually do anything. This hand I will keep, and I think, I think I'm going to put Nurturing Peatland back. It's tricky, but I feel like with this hand, I'm going to be long on action and short on lands like I don't really want to be tapping nurturing peatland a bunch I don't know maybe I keep it but I feel like these are going to be better oh turn one mana crypt this could be tough track tireless tracker oh pentad prism for one okay well that makes me want to grief and how am I going to grief I guess I'll grief pitching Luris. painful but what are you going to do he's got so much mana I have to do this now Othari or Ren and six. Ha! <laughs> uh, I guess I'll take Ren and six. And the reason I do that is because he can't play Othari this turn unless he draws a red or white untapped source. And if I can play Baleful Strix, then uh, I'll get to keep Othari kind of on the back burner here. All right, let's just draw. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Why don't I just do that? I'll get Swamp, Swamp, Persist the Grief here. Take Othari, Torsten, one, two, three, four, five. So we're not at Torsten yet. Let's just take, let's just take Othari and then Torsten will be annoying at some point, but that's a future problem. Name sticker Goblin? Oh my God, what a draw, okay. That's going to be tough. He has Soul Ring too, huh? Yeah, all right. Well, I don't think I'm going to win this one, but I guess we'll try. Baleful Strix, Gorio's Vengeance. That's not a particularly useful one either. Well, I have Archon, so if I can find a way to discard Archon, I guess the... Uh, Deathrite Shaman makes things tougher too. Draw. Nurturing Peatland. I guess I'll draw. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty dead here, I would say. I don't really know what I can do to get out of this. I mean, I guess I, I have like Lotus. I could do something, but this is 10 damage. I can't use the black ability. I guess I'll block. Sure, I'll, I'll do some blocks here. I can't even get Death Rite into play. Or with Death Rite, I can't even use uh, Archon. I guess I could Show and Tell. If I, sh if I draw a Show and Tell, that actually could could get me out of this. Gorio's Vengeance doesn't do it. I'm at 10. Uh, let's play Thassa's Oracle. See if we can find something. Black Lotus or Swamp? No. Those don't quite work. Okay, end of turn. He's going to exile Grief, probably. No, got the Baleful Strixture. I block, I take six, seven. Go down to three. And then I can maybe Archon. But probably not. Name Sticker Goblin, what a draw, huh? Okay. Oh, there's Demonic Tutor. 
Interesting. Um, three. I can demonic tutor LED, but with a death right shaman in play, it's not actually going to do it for me. I don't think I have anything that casting will do anything for. I could cast a Jace. Yeah, no, I think we're done here. All right. On to game three. All right. So do I want Fatal Push? Drown in the Lock? Not really. I might take, I might cut Luris for Grave Titan here. This could be better. Like, I could see Grave Titan, animating a Grave Titan working out pretty nicely, though. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's possible I just want the Fatal Push against Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman's pretty annoying. All right. I think I'll just make that swap and be good to go. Maybe cutting Luris is crazy. I don't want to... Oh, I'm going to cut... Maybe I cut Deep Cavern Bat. I think Collective Brutality as a discard outlet is too important. But I don't like Deep Cavern Bat that much against Ren and Six anyway. All right. On the play here... Can we get a little turn one here? But this hand is clearly good. I think I'll keep this. And I'm just going to play a Lotus and pass. If I draw a black card that I don't mind pitching, I can grief persist Juju Bean here. And I have a hole breacher that I can throw into play as well. I could have turn one griefed, but. It feels like if I uh, got a little punished for that. It feels like if I draw a good black card. Oh, see, now I can go Exile Corpse Dance. I mean, this is just such a stronger line. Let's see, what do we got? Inferno Titan through the Breach Infer in and uh, Utopia Sprawl. Yeah, I'll take Inferno Titan. And I think through the Breach here. Okay, and then pass. All right, so now I just need to draw Echo of Eons, uh, a Tutor effect, any of those things, and I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. He's going to get to Utopia Sprawl here. Oh, he's playing Death Rite. Eh, that's fine. That doesn't change too much. Oh, there's Doomsday. Okay, let's go Doomsday here. Juju Bean's hand is Utopia Sprawl and two lands. Yeah, uh, let's cast Doomsday. And the whole breacher doesn't even really matter too much for this. So for this, I have a lot of mana now. I could go... I'm definitely going to want Thassa's Oracle. Likely to want Black Lotus. What's the best way to, to Doomsday here? I could Knight's Whisper. I mean, I could do the same Knight's Whisper play into Lotus Oracle. Is there any way, is there any like Hole Breacher play or is that just, is that just fanciness for no reason? Probably fanciness for no reason. What else? Besides, I mean, I guess, is there any like cycling card? That, this deck actually would have liked to see like a cycler. I could Baleful Strix, but that, I don't have enough mana to do that. Oh, wait, I can Knight's Whisper. Oh, I don't have enough black. Because I could Knight's Whisper and then sack Lotus, but that doesn't quite do it. I think I am just going to have to go for the same play as last time and then hope he doesn't have a removal spell. And if he does, I actually probably lose because of the Deathrite Shaman. He could exile it from my graveyard. But I think, I think that's just what I have to risk. Is there any way to to mitigate that? Knight's Whisper, I'll have Lotus, I'll have four mana. If if I had a way to draw one card, oh, I could get Nurturing Peatland. Knight's Whisper, Crack Lotus for blue, cycle Nurturing Peatland, play Thassa's Oracle, and then even if they kill Thassa's Oracle, I'll have Hole Breacher in play. And then my last card, it kind of doesn't matter what my last card is, I guess. I mean... I could get Fatal Push, Baleful Strix, whatever. LED doesn't really do much. Sure, we'll, we'll exhume. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Um, 
because then I'm going to draw Knight's Whisper, Knight's Whisper into Lotus Peatland, and then Oracle, and they have to have two kill conditions. And I guess Exhum will be my last card. So Exhum, Oracle, Peatland, Lotus, Knight's Whisper. And then past the turn, and JJ's got one turn here to... Uh, potentially answer something but with the whole breacher it's going to be tough technically strip mine can buy him an extra turn but it's not too bad okay we're adding mana with death right okay utopia sprawl we knew about that one delighted halfling okay well don't think this is going to work out for Senor Bean here. Knight's Whisper going down to eight. Lotus. Peatland. Draw a card. And then Thassa's Oracle. Boom. And we got him. That was round one. Alrighty. Time for round two. This is going to be a tough one, though. We're playing against Mac, and he's got... Well, I was going to say it's going to be tough because he's got Ancestral and Time Walk. But uh, this is... What is this? I mean, besides doing some good stuff on turn one. Mm, I think what I'm going to do is I guess I could go land, lotus, DT, shallow grave. That's got to be pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, sack this for black, DT for shallow grave. And then go... Hold on control, cast Shallow Grave, and sack this for black. All right. That's all, just a turn one Grizzle Brand. <laughs> uh, I have black floating. Oh, I'm going to get to play Luris, and I guess I'll pay another seven life here. Ritual. <laughs> Luris. <laughs> uh, Lotus. And let's see, I have... I have a lot of mana. Let's go Grief, Exile, and Baleful Strix. Choose you. <laughs> Sand is Channel, JVP. I guess I'll just take the channel just to be safe. And then Deep Cavern Bat, probably. Mm, yeah, Deep Cavern Bat seems like it's pretty good. Take uh, Talisman, just because that adds his blue. Hit with Gristlebrand. Go to <laughs> a billion life. Uh, yeah, I'll pay seven more life to draw. And then his hand has... Oh, he does have a coveted jewel in hand, so I guess I don't really want to show and tell. But he's got no creatures in graveyards, so let's go sack this for black. Collective Brutality. <laughs> uh, discard Archon. And then <laughs> exhume the archon. I'm having a really good time here, if you didn't know. All right, I guess that's I guess that's an okay turn one. <laughs> this deck is absurd. <laughs> uh, I kind of want to put in tendrils because Mac has channel, but I'm not sure what to take out. I could take out Baleful Strix. Yeah, Baleful Strix doesn't do that much against him. It, he does have Coveted Jewel. It's pretty nice against Jewel. Maybe I just won't take out Tendrils. Maybe I want Drown in the Lock, just because Fastborn and Ancestral are both pretty good. I still like Show and Tell. All right, no, I, I like I like where I'm at. Let's see, uh, let's see what we can do here. And this is a lot less of a good turn one. I think I can Mulligan this. My my deck is just such a busted deck that I that I, I don't really feel like... Hold on, let's put Baleful Strix back, I guess. I don't really feel like I need to keep medium hands. This hand is interesting. I have the option of Exhume here. Let's just go land go. I could turn one LED Echo, but I have some good plays on two. So I think I'd rather just wait. Oh, that didn't work out quite as well as I was hoping. But I mean, that could have happened post Echo as well. Talisman, spin the top, okay. And then next turn, I mean, if I draw a Gristlebrand or Archon, I can just fire off the Exhum. 
All right. It's drawing a sensei's top. Let's crack this island. And I think, I think I just deep cavern bat to get a sense of what's going on here. His hand is Tinker, Spellseeker Cheese, Spellseeker Urza. What a busted hand. I mean, I could take the Tinker. I think at this point I actually am going to LED echo here. His, his hand is just extremely strong. So I think I'd rather do that. Okay, now, wow, we didn't draw any lands. Interesting. I don't really like this setup because now he's going to get to time walk or ancestral, depending on what he wants. But time walk makes the most sense because now, I mean, he basically just cast time warp, but he did put time walk in the graveyard for Jason Snapcaster. So... Oh, coveted jewel. So I'm not getting another turn here. Or he's going to tinker it away. No, he can't tinker it away because tinker's under bat. Otherwise, bat is going to steal the coveted jewel. I mean, I assume he's got an answer to that. Ancestral, okay. <laughs> Retrofitter, top. Oh, I get to steal coveted jewel. Okay. That, I mean, that's a pretty big game. Let's see. What can I, what can I do to... I'm going to have three mana... I could Imperial Seal for Lotus. Yeah, I think this works. Imperial Seal for Black Lotus. Attack with Deep Cavern Bat. Steal the Coveted Jewel. Draw Lotus. Land. Lotus. Sack Lotus for Black. Cast Doomsday. Thassa's Oracle. Black Lotus, Jace, Jace into those. Boom, that's a 2-0. <laughs> what a start. All right, let's continue the speed run. Uh, we're on the play here against Updraft, who's on red-white aggro with Lutri, Broadside Bombardiers, some other good stuff. All right, I will keep this. This is a probably just show and tell Gristle into play turn three. If I draw Collective Brutality turn two, then I could run the Collective Brutality, discard Gristlebrand Corpse Dance. Oh yeah, also a Mox. Okay. I'm a little worried about Containment Priest, but I guess Deep Cavern Bat will give me the low down here. This, that was a really good draw. That's a really good start into uh, my next stuff though. Oh man. Okay, so it's turn one Containment Priest, but no third land. I guess I'll take Skyclave. Sure. Pass the turn. This is going to be tough because if Updraft draws a land here, then I'm under a lot of pressure, especially if it's red. I would really like to get rid of that Containment Priest. I need to draw my Collective Brutality, and I'll definitely be siding in Fatal Push. Ah, I drew a land into Blade Splicer. Okay. Let's see, what can we do? Collective Brutality? No, land, um, go, I guess. Will I block the Blade Splicer? Mm, maybe. It seems reasonable to do so. I'll take five, I guess four if you count the life gain. I think I am gonna block, because if Updraft draws a red, then they can just cast a Bone Crusher Stomp anyway, and can't really play a Skyclave without targets, except just as a 2-2, in which case, that that's fine. So, oh, and the red mana, okay. Interesting. So he didn't want to do... Is he just going to play Inti now? All right, if I draw Collective Brutality, I think I've got a shot. If I don't, it's going to be tough. Archon of Cruelty. No, I'm getting completely owned by a Containment Priest here. And at this point, I'm actually pretty dead because even if I draw Brutality next turn, I mean, there's no reason to concede, I guess, but I don't think this one's going to do it. Containment Priest is, is quite the card. Mm -hmm. Can't It turns off Show and Tell, turns off Corpse Dance and Persist. I'm going to take 9 here because I'm sure something's getting discarded to Inti. And then, I don't even really know what I'm hoping to draw. Just 
discarded parallax wave. Yee. Can't beat that one either. All right, well, fair enough. I go to five. Updraft probably just plays the parallax wave. It's pretty nice to have in play with a containment priest, too. Also, just with lethal in play, it stops me from going like end of turn, kill containment priest, shallow grave, gristle brand, that sort of thing. So, I think I'm pretty dead here, but I'll let updraft cast get parallax wave. Actually, updraft has about five seconds to cast parallax wave before I just concede. Um. Okay, you're taking too long to make your decision. <laughs> yeah, I can't win, so I don't really want to sit there. Uh, let's put in fatal push. Maybe grave titan. I do think that the whole breacher is still, or sorry, the grief is still pretty good. Whole breacher is still okay. Jace is not the best, but there's some doomsday piles where I think it's good. Yeah, maybe I cut the Jace. Maybe I don't want the grave titan. Oh, I'll just I'll, I'll try to go a little bigger than that. All right. Let's see. All right, on the play here, let's see if I can get a turn one like the last time. Oh, no, but this is pretty close. Um, so turn one, I can go Ritual Doomsday. Alternately, I could wait a turn and cast a Collective Brutality or Deep Cavern Bat. Mm. Kind of feels like I just go turn one Dark Ritual Doomsday. And I'll get a Swamp here. Ritual Doomsday into Black Lotus. Thassa's Oracle. Knight's Whisper. And then I guess Exume. And does Dark Ritual help? Next turn I go Knight's Whisper into Oracle Lotus. No, Exhume, and then I guess another land. Sure. And stack it such that it's like land last, then Exhume, Oracle, Lotus, Knight's Whisper. All right, pass the turn. I just don't really even see, think I need to mess around with... Uh, making updraft discard here. If I can just go turn one doomsday and then win on turn two. There's not that many things you can do. JJ has the strip mine. <laughs> Esper Sentinel. Yeah, you get to draw a card. That's acceptable. And Knight's Whisper. You draw Lotus and Thassa's Oracle here and boom. That's turn two. Let's move on to game three, shall we? Well, that's what this deck's trying to do, and uh, you know what? I'll, I'll try and do it again. All right, game three here. Oh, this actually looks like a keepable hand. It's not the fastest, but I have Fatal Push for Containment Priest, and I have Deep Cavern Bat, and then I have Converter for Exhum. Okay, well, turn one Thalia, sure. Guess I'll just go land go. Turn two. I might just go turn two deep cavern bat. And we'll see what updraft does. Because I could fatal push, but it might be better to, to deep cavern first. Benevolent bodyguard? Okay. Um, that's annoying. Okay, let's play the bat then. And see what... We're facing down. Broadside Bombardiers, Reprieve. All right, I'll take the Broadside Bombardiers, leave you with Reprieve and cards. All cards you can't cast. No lands, please. No lands, no cheap cards. I will block Benevolent Bodyguard with Deep Cavern Bat if it comes down to it. Yeah, if I need to, I'll just do this manually. Turn one Thalia, turn two Bodyguard is pretty good. That's the sort of thing that can definitely beat this deck. If Updraft doesn't draw lands here, oh, okay, I will block, block the Benevolent Bodyguard in a second here. Maybe that turns on Reprieve. No, we're casting a spell, we're cycling Eagles, okay. And then playing a Plains and having, it doesn't have Reprieve up because of Thalia though. So, how do I want to do this? I think I fatal push the Thalia, and then I'm going to cast Currency Converter. If you want to reprieve Currency Converter, 
that's fine. Don't think that's a very good use of reprieve, but I will take it. Because even if Updraft didn't draw land, they could still just play broadside bombardiers here. So I don't think it really made sense to wait. Okay. Now I've got, now I just need to draw Lotus and then we're all set. <laughs> we got some good outs here. Okay, Swamp. Um, let's start with Baleful Strix, I think. And hope to draw something good. Nope. All right, well, let's play the Currency Converter and pass. One more miss on lands? Is that possible? Currently, I'm taking another 2 down to 13. Doesn't really have anything to throw with Broadside Bombardiers. I'm really surprised about the Benevolent Bodyguard trade-off, but uh, like I said, I guess I'll take it. This game would be, it'd be a lot harder to win with Thalia. Here I'm going to go Lurus Replay Deep Cavern Bat next turn, probably. I think that's better than playing uh, than using Currency Converter, but we'll see. Kind of depends what this turn brings. It doesn't look like a land as of yet. Luminarch Aspirant. Okay. Put the counter on the Bombardiers. Hit me down to 12. Yeah, and then next turn, we're getting pretty close to dying here. Broadside Bombardiers is, is quite the card. Oh, into a figure of destiny as well. Okay. Draw. Still just nothing, huh? All right, well, I'll play Luris into Deep Cavern Bat. I think that's good. And then take the Seasoned Engineer. Oh, a Metamorph? No, I got to take Metamorph and just hope that uh, Updraft doesn't draw a land here. Mm -hmm. I mean, as things currently stand, it's not like things are great. <laughs> We've got... The problem is we haven't drawn any, like, Lotuses or Big Creatures or Hull Breachers or any of those things, so we're not very close to setting up a win. The other hand, though, I could double block the Bombardiers with Baleful Strix plus Luris if I get the option. And that gains me a bunch of life, and then Bombardiers can't kill both. Though, I guess if the Luminarch puts the fourth counter on Luris, or on the Bombardiers, I guess I could triple block? That's kind of nice. Oh, they did draw the land. Okay. <laughs> so that's like Elspeth. Make Bombardiers fly. Yeah, and then attack for six and throw Luris. Attack for seven. I'm getting close to dying, but I'm not quite there. I guess I can technically block the double block the bombardiers here. Oh, that's interesting. Actually, I'm going to if I get allowed if I'm allowed the opportunity. Okay, they threw a deep cavern bat. Take it. All right. Well, I'm at five now. All right. This is actually potentially winnable if I draw something good. That is not count um five i go up to eight if i attack here i think i'm just gonna discard echo not use it i'm gonna play a land first and then i'm just gonna cast echo and hope to draw some crazy lotus hand No, that was not it. I needed to I needed to hit a lotus alongside a lot of these things. All right, well we're gonna have to settle for a two one, but my team is up like four zero at this point, so not too bad. And you know what? This deck was awesome. Just lotus LED petal ritual doomsday DT <laughs> for Thassa's Oracle alongside the animate package. Like I never got to hold breach or anyone, but that's okay. This yeah, this deck was sick. This this deck was awesome. I love getting to draft this kind of deck, and it's the fact that this shows up every now and then that makes me want to keep Doomsday Oracle in the cube, even though I know those don't always get played. I think the times they do are it's it's cool enough to make it worth it. All right, that'll do it for today. Pretty fast video, but you know what? This deck lent itself to the fast games, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. As always, I appreciate you hanging out with me as we get to Doomsday some people. That was pretty sick, and you know what? When you open Lotus, you got to make it count, and this deck certainly did. All right, well that'll do it. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another draft. 
thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.